Hello guys, today uh, we're going to show you how to use S82357, our GPIB USB interface, to connect to some old instrument like 3458. Uh, recently we got some questions from customers about how to use our GPIB USB interface to connect to some very old GPIB instrument. They said sometimes the communication met some issue and the software cannot find their instrument successfully. So uh, we borrowed a 3458 from some other guys and uh, I'm here to do some demo to show you how to make the connection. 3458 is an 8.5 digit multimeter uh, from HP and this is a very old instrument so it's a little bit tricky to connect to your PC via GPIB port we got a function generator here and we connect this two instrument together use the function generator to generate some special signals and we're gonna use the DMM to do the measurement and use the PC to read back the value and see the result if it's right here are uh, two GPIB USB board. The one on the left side is from Agilent. This is a real 82357 Agilent GPIB USB board. The other one on the right side is from Beiming Technology. It's from, it's from us and it's the S82357 GPIB USB interface. And we have a software installed on our PC. This is Agilent IO Library. So the first thing we're going to do is we will connect Agilent GPIB board first to see what's going to happen. So here I connect the USB cable. <coughs> now let's back to PC and uh, you can hear the sound it shows that the PC has detected the GPIB interface and began to search for the instrument connected to PC. Now, here actually they found two instruments at two different GPIB address. The first one is 33220. This is the function generator I just show you. Okay, the second one is GPIB address 22, but when I connect it, you can see it shows a right sign here, which means it's not detected successfully. Why this happens? You can see the function generator has been successfully found, but the DMM, the 3458, the software shows it's, it's not there. Even though we are using the Agilent GPIB board, this thing also happens. Actually, that's because of the software. This is Agilent I.O. library software, and uh, each time when they detected some instrument on some certain GPIB address, it automatically send out the star IDN command. This command is used to query the instrument model number, serial number, this kind of things. From, I think for all the new instruments which support SCPI command, they're going to give the answer successfully, just like the function generator 33.220. It understands the command and give back the feedback successfully. But for some very old GPIB instrument, this command is unknown to them. So that's why 3458 do not understand this command and could not provide the right feedback. So what we're gonna do? Okay, let's switch to our GPIB board and we're gonna show you how to solve this issue. We disconnect the 82357 and connect to S82357 from Beaming technology. Okay, so 
let's see. The same thing happens. Found the function generator and uh, couldn't understand the feedback from GPIB address 22. Okay, so what we're going to do is we right click the mouse and choose change properties. Here, let's uncheck this auto identify this instrument and press OK, which means we stop the software to send out star IDN command at this GPIB address. Now you can see we found 33 to 20 and another instrument at GPIB 22 address, but we, since we didn't send out the IDN command, everything seems okay here. If you really want to know or you really want to communicate to the 3458, you can choose this way. Again, right click the mouse and send and choose send the command to this instrument. We need to send the ENDON command first, which means we enable the end character function. And then we send out the command ID Yep, you can see the readback value HP3458A. So the ID command is a command that 3458 could understand, not the IDN. So that's why sometimes uh, when you use Agile and IO library to communicate with some old instruments, this thing always happens. So what you're going to do is you need to check the user manual and find out what's the real command, what's the command side it could understand. Okay, now let's open another software we found from Agile website. Here is a free software for 3458, and uh, what it can do is it, this software is used to measure the AC RMS signal. RMS value. Here, when we use the function, when we set up the function generator, we use it to generate a 5 volt VPP signal with 50 hertz frequency. So, when we use this software to measure the signal, we press start and uh, we give the right range. It began to do the measurement. Here you can see, for 5 volts VPP signal, the RMS value is about 3.5 volts. The frequency is 49.9996 Hz, very close to the 50 Hz we set, and the software runs successfully. Another software we can try is, here is another software, uh, used to use the digitizer function from 3458 it will digitize 4100 DC values and uh, show the result here so let's press, press the get reading button here yeah you can see number of readings taken 4100 and it took some time to read the value back to PC Okay, we got here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go down to 4100. And you can see this is a sign signal, so the read back value from 1, 2, 3, 4, and the minus 1, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2. Yep. So you can see that our S. 82357 really works with this kind of old HP instrument, uh, GPIB 
old GPIB instrument like 3458, but you need to do some small sighting, so you need to use the right command to communicate with this instrument. And we also support the software developed by Agilent to communicate with this instrument. Okay, thank you for your time. And if you are really interested in our product, please visit our website at bmjd.biz or beimingtech.com B-E-I-M-I-N-G-T-E-C-H.com Thank you. Bye.